Welcome again. This module is still in Module 1, but Part 5. We're, be we're going to begin to look at an important number that helps us to describe large sets of data. In fact, we're actually going to look at three different types of numbers, all of which give us a picture of where our data is centered around. <coughs> These numbers we call the measures of central tendency and they include three numbers, the mean, the median, and the mode, all of which have their advantages and all of which have their downsides, but all of which have an appropriate place as measures of central tendency. The first one we're going to look at you probably are the most familiar with. It's called the mean. <coughs> the mean is, as you probably know, the average of a given data set. The way we find mean is to add up all of the numbers that we have and then divide that sum by the number of values. This of course works well if we're actually dealing with numbers. As we've looked at, um, we have categorical data and then we also have quantitative data. If we're dealing with numerical data, then mean can be a very appropriate way to measure the central tendency of that data. One of the upsides of the mean is it includes all the data in the calculation. That means each number is part of calculating the final outcome. This unfortunately is one of the downsides as well. If our data contains any extremes or outliers, then the mean will unfortunately be uh, affected highly by that. For example, if I have a classroom of test scores that I'm trying to find the mean for, if three or four students did not show up and take the exam, their scores, of course, would be a zero. Those zeros, if I use them as part of calculating the mean, will highly influence those, uh, the mean outcome. In fact, as you, can, as you know, it would probably pull it toward the left. That would give me a very uh, skewed result. My point in taking the scores of the students who took the test was to find the average of how they did for those, of, uh, for those who actually took the test. So in this case, uh, because those outliers are there, it's going to highly influence the outcome of the mean. The median, on the other hand, is another way for us to measure the central tendency of the data. The mean literally, or the median, I'm sorry, is literally the middle value of the set of values. The way we find it is we first take our data and list it in ascending or descending order. <coughs> For an odd number of values, the median is actually the number that's in the middle. For an even set of data, uh, values, the median, there's two numbers that are in the middle. And so we actually take the average or the mean of those two middle values and that average is the me median of that data set. Uh, this is also used when we're actually dealing with numbers. Only numbers can really be put in ascending or descending order. Um, however, the, uh, the benefit of the median is that it's not going to be influenced by those extreme values and outliers. Those zeros that I have will not really affect where the middle value is. So one of the things that we need to, to do in finding the median is to locate where the center point is for those numbers. If we had three numbers in ascending order, the middle value would obviously be uh, the second value. But if we have 35 or 40 values, how do we find the center? Well, this little formula here can help you find the location of the mean, median, uh, when they're in ascending or descending order. We take n, which n represents the number of values that we have, we add 1 to it, and then we divide that by 2. The number that we get will be the location of our median when those numbers are in ascending or descending order. The mode is an interesting calculation. Um, the mode is simply the number or the value, whether it's a number or a non-number, 
that occurs most in a data set. The mode is really our attempt to try to draw a central tendency or to find a, a value that occurs the most often when we're dealing with qualitative data. For example, if we were measuring uh, the most uh, or the geographical area where most students live in that are in our class, I could have everybody turn in their zip codes. Those zip codes, if we've, as we've discussed, don't really have any real numerical meaning to them. They're simply showing us where s people live geographically. Well, the one that occurs the most often, if most people, say for example, lived in the downtown area of Tacoma, um, if that occurred the most often, then we would say downtown Tacoma is a central tendency of the geographical location of students in this class. <coughs> so you can see the mode is best used when we're not dealing with numbers, but with non-numerical data that's categorical or qualitative in nature. Now, if we are dealing with uh, numbers or non-numbers, and one value or one data value occurs the most often, then we say that data set is unimodal. But if we're just talking about numbers that are repeating or uh, categories that are repeating the most often, a lot of different outcomes are possible. We could actually have two categories that appear the most often, or two sets of numbers that occur the most often. In that case, we would have a what we would call a bimodal set of data. If we have more than two that occur equally as often, then we say it's multimodal. And if nothing occurs, uh, n if nothing repeats them themselves, then we say there is no mode for that particular data set. <coughs> now, using the TIA, TI calculator, um, this makes finding these measures of central tendency fairly easy. Let's take these high temperatures for cities in the southeast. Um, so our first step would be to put these into a list in our calculator. So as you saw in the calculator video, the way we do that is we go to the stat button on our calculator and then uh, when we hit stat, the first thing that comes up as an option is edit. Um, hit enter and then we create a list of numbers in list one. You can really use this for any list. You don't have to put them into list one. However, list one is the default list. Close parentheses. If you use any other kind of list, um, then on this next step here, um, once you put the numbers into the list, you're going to hit stat, and then you're going to toggle over with the right arrow button and highlight calc across the top. Choice number one under calc is one variable stats. You can either hit one for number one, or you can just hit enter. Now, once you've hit enter, you're going to see one variable stats appear on your screen. If you add those numbers in any list other than list one, then you want to hit the comma button on your calculator, and you want to hit second two if it's in list two, second three it's in, if it's in list three, or second whatever number your list, your numbers are under. So, once you do that, you're going to have a list of outcomes. The first one says X bar. It's actually an X with a bar over the top. That's a symbol that we use for mean. And that means that is the mean of this data set. Put these into your calculator and see if you can figure out what the mean is. If you scroll down on that list of numbers, then you're going to see also the median. It's listed under MED. <coughs> on the second screen as you're scrolling down. See if you can again find the mean of these da of these numbers <coughs> and then compare them to what we have here. In doing this, you may want to hit pause for the video. Another type of problem that we, uh, or another type of situation where we may want to find the mean and the median, 
is when we're being given a frequency distribution table. So for example, here's a frequency distribution table. Now if I were to want to find the mode, which of, of course is the most occurring, then that mode would be 107. Here's why. Because we don't have uh, the actual data values themselves, uh, the first thing that we need to do is to figure out what the midpoint is of each of these classes. If you recall, finding the midpoint of a class requires simply that you add the lower class limit and the upper class limit and divide by 2. That's finding the mean of the data set. Since we don't know what number is actually in this category, we just approximate it with the midpoint. Now, because for mode, uh, we would want to pick the most occurring set, that's going to be 17. 17 is the most often, uh, is the highest frequency. That means most numbers fell into this class. The midpoint of that class is 107, and that's why we've selected it as the mode. Now, in calculating mean, the next step is to take all of our midpoints and multiply them by the frequency. The reason we want to do this is that as we look at this table, we can see that most numbers are falling uh, on this end here. <coughs> in fact, there's 17 that fall here. There's only one that falls in the 70 to 74 range. That means we want to give this uh, class more weight than the others. And so in a sense, what we're doing here is we're undoing uh, what would have been the total if these were the actual data values. In other words, if I actually had only one value of 72, one value of 77, and two values of 82, six values of 87, four values of 92, etc., etc., etc. You can kind of see what we're doing here if you take one of these numbers. Let's take 1067. If I divide that by 11, that would give me 97. So if every number that I put into my calculator was 97, and I did it 11 times, I would get this total, and the average of those numbers would be 97. So we're undoing that division that occurs whenever you do a, um, an average. <coughs> so our next step, then, is to find the total of all of these undone uh, divisions. So we add up all these uh, products that we got. As you're entering these into your calculators, you can actually put pluses in between all these multiplications. In other words, go 72 times 1 equals, or don't hit equals, just go 72 times 1 plus 77 times 1 plus 82 times 2 plus 87.6 until you go through all of the numbers and multiply all the midpoints by their respective frequencies. Then at the very end, you can hit equal, and this should be your total. Now what we want to do is to undo this undoing of the divisions. In other words, we want to divide this total by the total number of numbers, which is equal to the sum of our frequencies. 69 means that there were 69 data values originally in my data set. If I take those numbers and I divide it by the frequency, I have uh, the mean of the frequency distribution table the most occurring value, or the central tendency of those values, is around 101.35. <coughs> Finding the median is somewhat similar. So remember, the median is just the middle number. Now, of course, again, we don't know what these numbers are. The original numbers have been lost once we created our frequency distribution table. However, we're just going to, again, pretend that the midpoint is the value of the number in that whatever class or median falls into. Recall our location formula. The location of the median is always equal to the number of values that we have plus 1 and then divided by 2. In this case, our total was 69. So we're going to take 69, we're going to add 1 to it, that gives me 70 and we're going to divide 70 by 2. That gives me 35. 
That means that the location of the median will be in the 35th spot if these numbers are put in ascending order. Well, in the frequency distribution table, they are in ascending order. And so all I need to do now is to count until I get to the 35th value. So we start at 1, 1 plus 1 is 2, 2 plus 2 is 4, 4 plus 6 is 10, 10 plus 4 is 14, 14 plus 11, that's right, is 25, and 25 plus 12 is 37. So within this uh, category here, 12, we hit the 37th number. That means that 102 is the median of the frequency distribution table. Note that the value of the median and the value of the mean were very close in this case. The mean was 101.35 and the median is 102. In most cases, if there's no real big outliers or extremes, the median and the mode, or uh, the median and the mean, I'm sorry, are generally close to the same number. Our mode was also not too far off being at 107. That is how we find the measurements of central tendency, and that means this is the end of this module.